Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, guide the understanding of all of us, all of us, mine as well as yours, my understanding and yours too, so that you may know what His will is. By the way, speaking of which, one of the questions that people ask the most, we hear people asking this all the time, Bishop, I was baptized in water and I'm seeking the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I heard that when we are baptized in water, we are also baptized with the Holy Spirit. Theoretically, this should have happened because that's what happened to Jesus. As soon as he was baptized in water, he received the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit comes when a person surrenders. They give a hundred percent of themselves when they place their heart, their will, their desire, their lusts, their dreams, when they place it all on the altar. And when they receive the Holy Spirit, they have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, zero doubt concerning their baptism. There is no doubt because the Holy Spirit himself says through the Apostle Paul that the Holy Spirit bears witness which means that he confirms with our spirit, with our soul, that he is in us. And that that person is now his dwelling place. They have the glory of God in them. And when this happens, when a person receives the baptism with the Holy Spirit, and this will answer many questions and clarify many doubts once and for all. When a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, dear friends, that person receives the character of God. Actually, the character of God comes upon them, comes upon their life. Pay attention. When a person receives the baptism with the Holy Spirit, that person is embraced by the Holy Spirit. Their heart is filled by the Holy Spirit. Their will, their desire, their lusts disappear because there God's dreams start to dwell in this person. God places his dreams inside of this person and they start, they have a desire, they have a, a dream to want to serve God and to want to do something for him because it's so great, so great, so immense the fact that they have received the Holy Spirit that they can't just keep that for themselves. They want to give it over to others. They want to speak to others about Jesus. And this is so glorious, dear friends. So glorious. The presence of the Holy Spirit in us is so glorious. I wish I had words to explain this. To say what I know, what I feel. Yes, I feel it. This I, I indeed feel a great desire to pass, to transfer everything that I have to those who are interested. Because it's the Holy Spirit that does that. It's He who moves our heart. Pay attention to what the Apostle, led by the Holy Spirit, says. Pay attention. He says like this, Now, he who establishes us, now who establishes us with you in Christ, 
the Holy Spirit is addressing this letter, the second letter of his to the Corinthians, to the Christians of the church in Corinth. He was talking to all the people, to the members of the church. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ, meaning the one who makes us compatible, the one that makes our dreams match, the one that makes us have the same spirit, the same will, the same desire, he says. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ, meaning with the Lord Jesus, and has anointed us, and has anointed us, he anointed me and you who have the Holy Spirit, is God. He's the one who anoints us, who also, who also has sealed us, sealed us. It was a means of of confirming inside of us and give us an idea. You, you know that though in those days there were letters that were sealed. For example, whenever a king would send a letter to a person, to his general, so he would seal that letter with his seal, with his seal, with the ring he had on his finger, he would seal that letter, and only the addressee, only the person, the person that was meant to receive the letter, had the right to open the letter. If anybody else broke that seal, then the addressee would know that the letter had been opened by somebody else. So God, who anointed us, he sealed us. He sealed us. He placed his stamp on us. He marked us. He determined already, this one is mine. This one is mine. Mine. It's God speaking to that person who received the Holy Spirit. So God, God, who anointed us, who also has sealed us and on top of having anointed us, he has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. He has given us the guarantee of the Holy Spirit. Where? In our hearts. Now you can imagine, if the heart of a man is being led by the Holy Spirit, then every dream of this heart every desire, its will, everything that this heart wants and longs for is from the Holy Spirit, comes from the Holy Spirit. It's what comes from the Holy Spirit. It's what matches and combines with the Holy Spirit. So when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, explaining this in an easier way, when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, their dreams become God's dreams. Their desires become God's desire. Because that's what the Holy Spirit came upon them for. To place His will within them. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. I didn't embrace the cause of preaching the gospel and wanted to save souls. It's not because this was a good idea I had. Oh, the message of the gospel is nice. Let me go preach it. No, not at all. This wasn't just a good idea from me. But when the Holy Spirit came upon me, then He gave me a thirst for souls, a hunger for souls, to save souls. And to save souls means to bring to others what God had given me. What God had given to me, His anointing and His seal, I wanted to bring to others. Do you understand now? Very well. When you see a person who claims to have the Holy Spirit, who speaks in tongues, who prophesies, 
who preaches the gospel. It can be whoever they are. It can be a pastor, a bishop, it can be a pastor's wife, a missionary, whoever, whoever they want to be. Whatever title they may have, it does not matter. But if this person has the goal of doing that for themselves, for their name to be made great, for them to make money, for them to be known in this world, this person does not have the Holy Spirit. They have the spirit of the world. They have the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world is this. The person wants to show off. They want to be seen. They want to do this and that so that everyone can see and applaud them for them to have, let's say, followers. They want to be an influencer. They want to influence others. Why? Because they have a personal goal and dream. It's their heart that wants. Their heart desires to be worshipped and served. When this happens, it's then characterized that the Holy Spirit is not in that person. Because the Holy Spirit, dear friends, when He descended upon Jesus, up until then, Jesus was mute concerning the kingdom of God. But after he received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, at the age of 30, he started to preach the gospel. He started to tell people, repent. Repent, because the kingdom of God is at hand. So he started to expose himself and to give to people what he had. And what did he have? He had the Holy Spirit. So, you understand now the difference between the baptism or those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit and those who are not. And sometimes they think they are. So, I, I get sad to know that there are so many people seeking not the Holy Spirit, not the seal, not the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but to speak in tongues and to prophesy and to perform miracles. It's not because a person performs miracles that they have the Holy Spirit. Not at all. That's not the case. Because those who perform the miracle is God, not the person. So, when a person receives the anointing of God and the seal of the Holy Spirit, then they have the guarantee, God's guarantee, within their heart. Their heart overflows with a desire, with a longing to save souls to Jesus. I think that I already said this, but I will repeat. I remember that there was a time I was preparing myself for an exam in college and I was evangelizing, speaking about Jesus to this colleague of mine. I will never forget him. So, this friend was very receptive to the word and the teaching to what I was giving to him. I was very young. I was still... I wasn't even 20 yet. So what happened? He came to me a day. He came and said, Look, dear, I wanted to ask you, please, don't you come to me with this topic about church. I already have my church, I'm Catholic, and I don't want to mix things. He was very polite, very polite still. But I received that no from him as a punch in my face, right on my nose. Because I was preaching, teaching 
speaking to him and trying to clarify his doubts. And suddenly he comes to me and says, no, I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't care about this. I came here to study. I have to graduate and I have a family to provide for, etc. That's what he said. He spoke about his dreams. You know what happened? I didn't even stay in the classroom that night. I left the classroom and I remember as I walked home, I was walking and crying and sobbing. I had never cried that much before. Not that I remember. Not as an adult, but that day, that night, I cried, I cried so much. That's why I even walked home. It was night time, there was no one on the street, so I was all by myself to talk to God and pray. And I cried, I cried, I sobbed. And why was it? It's because... I was certain that I was gaining that soul. I was certain. I was, wow, I'm going to save this soul to Jesus. And suddenly I receive a punch, a no. And that was it. And I cried and said, oh my God, I want a soul, at least one soul to Jesus, at least one. Come on. And I was complaining and lamenting and saying, come on, I acted like Jeremiah. You know, the lamentations of Jeremiah. And I was there lamenting. Why? It's because my heart was controlled, led, filled by God's feelings towards human beings. Because this is God's dreams to you, dear friends. It doesn't matter how bad of a sinner you are. God's dream is to dwell inside of you. However, of course, in order for Him to dwell in you, you have to open your heart to Him because He cannot enter within your heart without your due permission. He gave you the free will and you have the right to even say no to him. Wasn't it what Jesus said? I am at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine in with him. However, if they don't open the door, I cannot do anything. So, when the Holy Spirit enters us, then there is supper. We have pleasure in having supper with our Lord. And we want everything that He wants. We embrace His faith, His ideologies, His dreams, and we fight for His dreams. That's what happened to me. And you see that many people I was very annoying, you know, when the Holy Spirit came upon me. It's not that the Holy Spirit makes us be annoying, but I was a bit exaggerated. I, I wasn't able to keep what I had within me. And my colleagues at work, they would mock me, making fun of me, etc. And I faced all that. But that's what happens when God anoints us and seals us with His guarantee, the guarantee of the Holy Spirit. This happened to me. I can say it. What is written, I can tell you. I can tell you. And I want to know who can say otherwise and, and, and say that I am a liar. So, dear friends, do not be deceived. Don't you think that the miracles, 
that the work of God, I am not of God because I started the universal church of the kingdom of God. No, I am of God because I, I have been sealed by him. He anointed me. And this is visible. This is visible. This is a given. There is no way to deny it. It's not by the miracles and signs. No, but it's by the behavior. Starting in my marriage. Our marriage. Our marriage shows this character, this anointing. Did you know that? When a person is sealed, baptized with the Holy Spirit, they desire very, very much to have someone who is also sealed and anointed by the Holy Spirit in order to be their companion and become one. And it's been 53 years of marriage now. So our daughters who got married, they are also following the same path. By the way, today Christiani is celebrating 33 years of marriage. Isn't it wonderful? 33 years of marriage. One husband, one wife, one flesh, one spirit. So they have their own testimony to pass on to people. If they were deceivers, do you think this marriage would have lasted? If they both, if they had a heart different from one another, do you think they would still be together? No, but because they have the same heart, the same spirit, the same anointing, then they are glued together, just like Esther and I. And this has to happen to you. But in order for it to happen to you, only you can open the door of your heart because the heart can only be open from the inside. It cannot be open from the outside. Jesus cannot open your heart. You have to open it and say, Lord, you may come in. It's very nice. So it's written here, He who establishes us with you in Christ, Paul was talking to Christians here, he, and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us, is marked us, is placed his mark on us. The spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. You know when someone goes and they give a jury as guarantee that they will pay back the loan. You know, God's guarantee in us, in us is the Holy Spirit. He is the guarantee. And this is the goal of the campaign of Israel. Seek Him. Give your life to Him. Don't you think, oh, I'm going to put money together here and bring to the altar. No. You have to make your heart. You have to get your heart and place that on the altar and submit it. Oh my God, I want. And you show that you really want. Your surrender must be total, because if it's not total, then your offering is not accepted. And not just your offering, but anybody's offering. My offering will not be accepted. Did you understand, dear friends? May God bless you. May God bless you. And bless you by guiding your thoughts in order for you to wake up and then have a heart according, according a heart that matches God's heart, the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.